Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. Mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, live the life we love. Don't forget to loaf and lubricate. I found this poem by a Franciscan monk, Giovanni Giocondo, 1433 to 1515 entitled, I am your friend, and my love for you goes deep. I am your friend, and my love for you goes deep. There's nothing I can give you which you do not have. But there is much, very much, that while I cannot give it, you can take. No heaven can come to us unless our hearts find rest in it today. Take heaven. No peace lies in the future which is not hidden in this present little instant. Take peace. The gloom of the world is but a shadow. Behind it, yet within our reach, is joy. There is radiance and glory in darkness, could we but see. And to see, we have only to look. I beseech you to look. Life is so generous a giver, but we, judging its gifts by their covering, Cast them away as ugly, or heavy, or hard. Remove the covering and you will find beneath it a living splendor woven of love by wisdom with power. Welcome it, grasp it, and you touch the angel's hand that brings it to you. Everything we call a trial, a sorrow, or a duty, believe me, that angel's hand is there. The gift is there and the wonder of an overwhelming presence, overshadowing presence. Your joys too, be not content with them as joys. They too conceal diviner gifts. Life is so full of meaning and purpose, so full of beauty beneath its covering, that you will find earth but cloaks your heaven. Courage then to claim it, that is all. But courage you have, and the knowledge that we are pilgrims together, wending through unknown country home. So positive thinking is what this is all about. Remember the law of attraction, that which is like unto itself is drawn. So learn to create deliberately, not by fault, and remember that which you believe, that which you allow and expect, is and will be. When I talk about awakening joy, or what I think of as genuine happiness, it's a feeling of openness and ease in the body. Notice when your body is contracted and then open up how great it feels to stretch, which is why I always get back to yoga or some form of movement. And you realize that whether you're in an experience that you want to strengthen it, or repeat it, or let go of it. Do the same thing with your mind. If you can catch your mind when it's tense or at ease, then you know if you're moving towards or away from what could be joy for you. So a lot of this has to do with de-stressing yourself by whatever means necessary. And of course, if you're studying yoga, which is my main metaphor, but a rose by any other name would smell sweet, it's an art and a science. It asks you to delve into your anatomy, both objectively, the amazing aspect of what the human structure is, and also emotion. Learn to recognize what you feel, because your emotions inform like the inner weather, and then your thoughts, your reasoning, can know what to do with that. But if you're out of touch with that, then you won't express yourself truly. You'll express yourself in a way that's skewed. So the discipline asks you for precision, a kind of exactness, and that's called skill in action, and you take that off the mat for sure, and that's the way you expand your practice into your daily life. But it's an initiatory experience, so there's apt terminology. You have to learn the jargon to help you penetrate and comprehend what you're really doing. And what are you really doing? You're trying to find the perennial philosophy in a constantly changing world. I do believe that there's tremendous guidance and wisdom and stability that the wisdom of our ancestors have bequeathed to us. And its core 
is what I call eternal truth. Now we can argue over what the truth is. And sometimes what the ancients have to share with us seems incompatible with our modern day. But what you have to understand is the radical truth is never going to be fit into a set of beliefs or concepts. It's formless. It can't be enunciated ever. But it is expressed in its own historical time, in its own geographical location, with a certain kind of ethnic reflection of the culture from which it comes, which it's revealed to. But it can never be stated in any partial, finite, limited expression. The radical truth is changeless, even though its various forms seem contingent upon it. But it's not one condition among other conditions. It is the condition, capital C, of all phenomena and not itself in any specific phenomena. So if you can use any expression of truth now to shoot you through to the universal truth behind that, more power to you. If you can't, I would take a humble stance and think that I don't know it all. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Have a wonderful life. Don't forget to tune into Good Vibrations Yoga class this coming Wednesday. It's the third in our series, Yoga and the Yoga Sutras. Go to gabrielhalpern.com, subscribe, tell your friends, let me know how I'm doing, and uh, speak to me if you'd like a CD.